Hey everybody, Mr. Quick here. Welcome to Eureka Math slash Engage New York Math, Module 4, Lesson 7, Replacing Letters with Numbers. The key thing here that we're going to look at today, a lot of times when we have letters, uh, when I talk about letters, I'm not necessarily talking about variables, although sometimes I can be. But when we have letters in an expression, one letter is one number. Like one letter, if I have the letter G, in an expression, a mathematical expression. G can't be 12 and 7, right? G has to be one number. And so when that number, whatever the number is, replaces the letter, then you can evaluate the expression down to a number. Then you can solve the expression. So we're going to go over just a few examples of what I'm talking about here. This is a little warm-up here. Um, if we're looking at this square, which is made up of smaller squares as well, what is the length of one side of the square? Well, you see we have one, two, three of these smaller squares. We don't know how long those are, but we do know there are three. So we're going to say there are three units. It is three units long. If you recall, what is the uh, formula for the area of a square? The area of a square is uh, side squared. So you see how I've replaced... Um, area we don't know yet but I put made use an A for that one side I put uh, S to represent that and then what is the square this square this particular square what is the squares area as a multiplication expression well if it's side squared then we would have 3 squared which as a multiplication expression would be the same as 3 times 3 right because 3 is our base number and you have it 2 times we end up with 3 times 3, which is 9, which makes sense because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, how does that make sense because that's how many sides there are? Well, it, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the area. So if you think of an area, think about painting a wall. So count the X's. One, or count, I'm going to write X's, but count the squares. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's basically saying length times width, except with a square, you know that the length and the width are going to be the same because it's a square. Okay, let's look at the second example here. Here we have a rectangle, and they've given us the formula area equals length times width. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions, and we're going to use both of these drawings to be able to answer the questions. What does the letter B represent in this blue rectangle? What does the letter B? Well, we can see that this side and this side, we know are going to be the same. If this side is 8 centimeters, then we know that B equals 8 centimeters, right? So look over here to the second rectangle. What is X? X would equal what? Well, you see that X represents two of these smaller rectangles within the larger rectangle. Two, two sections, two units. And here, we see that one unit is four centimeters. Well, if this is four, then they all have to be four. It's almost like a tape diagram. And so if x is two of them, then x would also represent eight, right? And so then, what is the length of the rectangle? Well, if we have 4, 4, 4, and 4, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, or um, 4 times 4, you'd have the length would be 16 centimeters. So now, if we're going to assume that these are the same size, what would be the area of each? Well, we know if area is length times width. We're going to replace the length. I'm going to write length times width here. We're going to replace the length, or the L, with 16, because it is 16 centimeters wide. And so we're replacing L with 16. L can't be anything else now. L has to be 16. 16 times the width, which we've already established as 8. So W equals 8. And then multiply them together, and you would get 128 centimeters squared, which is up in the area. So in this case, we have our formula here with letters, and once we know what the letters represent, we know they can't represent anything else, 
we can actually solve the problem. Okay, so we're going to be talking about volume now. Volume equals length times width times height. L times W times H. A quick way to determine the volume of a right rectangular prism, which is, hey, what we have a couple of right here. We look at the uh, right rectangular prisms in your student materials. That's actually just this. We're going to look at this right now. What does the L represent in the first diagram? The L represents the length of the prism. W would be the width, how wide it is. L is how long it is. And then the H is going to be the height. So each of those letters represents one part of the rectangular prism. Since we know that, I'm going to write that down here, length times width times height. Since we know the formula is volume, by the way, it's volume, volume equals length times width times height, what can we substitute for L in the formula? What would be our L? Well, hopefully, you're thinking, well, length here is going to be the same as 6. So we change that to 6. Can we change, can we put any other number in for L? Could we put 2 or could we put 8? The answer is no. Only one number can replace one letter. Okay, so then the W is the width. The width here is 2. So we're going to replace that. And then the height, again, the height over here, the H, represents 8. So we're going to, rep we're going to um, represent the H as 8. We cannot mix and match. We have to keep it straight because each letter can only represent one number and vice versa. Okay, and if we were to solve that, of course we could do 6 times 2 is 12, times 8 is going to give us 96 centimeters cubed because it is volume. Now, key takeaway here, these letters here represent actual numbers. If you have a variable, if you have x plus 2 equals uh, 6, then your variable x has to equal 4. X can't, because then if you put it back in the problem, you'd have 4 plus 2 equals 6. X can't equal 7. X can't equal 2. X can't equal 4 and 8. Every time you have a variable or a letter, it represents one number in the problem. And that's the key thing I want to look at in this lesson. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about this and how it can ap apply um, in other situations and some of the things that we're going to be doing with that when we're face-to-face -face in class. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.